Welcome to Advocacy 101, Conducting a Successful Advocacy Meeting. This is the second in a series of three broadcasts designed to help you improve your advocacy and engage with your lawmakers on Capitol Hill and beyond. These broadcasts are hosted jointly by the American Brain Coalition and the American Neurological Association. I'm Katie Sale, Executive Director of the American Brain Coalition. In our current COVID-19 world, there are fewer opportunities to meet in person on Capitol Hill. As we discuss meeting logistics, please keep in mind that a meeting may now be a phone call or a video conference call. For simplicity's sake, we will refer to them all as meetings. This broadcast will help you succeed in a meeting with your legislators, whether face-to-face -face or virtually. The first step in meeting with your legislators is scheduling the meeting. You can find a congressional calendar on ABC's website to determine when your elected officials will be in Washington, D.C. and when they will be in your home, district, or state. Call or email the office with whom you would like to meet. Some offices will have contact forms on their website that you can fill out to request a meeting. Staff may direct you there. If you call, ask to speak to the scheduler to arrange an appointment with the representative or senator or you can ask for the staff person who handles the issue you want to discuss. Identify the purpose of your meeting. Kindly tell them you represent your organization, which is a member of either the ABC or a member of the ANA, and would like to meet to talk about support for brain research and healthcare. If you are unable to talk to somebody, leave a clear message with your phone number and email address and check back every few days. Don't be surprised if you have to make multiple requests. Be persistent, but be careful not to be overly aggressive. Congressional offices receive a lot of requests each week, so give them time to respond. Once you secure a meeting or a phone conference, call to confirm a day or two prior to the meeting. Well, one of the, the unique features that I, I bring to the table here is that in addition to being an advocate, I've been on the other side of the table. I served as a, in a sabbatical year as a, uh, a staff fellow for Senator, the late Senator Edward M. Kennedy in the Health Committee in the United States Senate. So I've been on the side of the table listening to advocates as well as being an advocate. So I wanted to give you some tips on how to be most effective. What are the things that you should be doing? Well, first of all, you'll probably be go going to be going to Washington as a group. And in that group, most likely you will have a professional from a firm that's designed to, 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 uh, to convey advocacy that's going to be working with you. So that person who's working with you is going to, to uh, enable you to, to uh, develop a message. And that message has to be consistent, and it has to be consistent amongst all the members of the group. Otherwise, you'll be diffused, your message will be lost, the staffer or the, or the member of Congress that you're speaking with will not hear you and you won't be effective. So make sure that everyone is, is unified in the message that they want to give and make sure that they don't stray from that or for some personal issue. Meeting with an elected official can be nerve wracking, but if you are well prepared, you can ace it. Take some time to prepare for your meeting. Know your audience. Remember your research we discussed in broadcast number one? You know where your representative or senator stands on legislative issues that affect the brain community. Use that knowledge to create your talking points. Congressional members represent their constituents, so they want to hear from you. It's your opportunity to make your priorities known. For example, clearly explain the benefits of neuroscience funding for patients the local community, university, and hospitals. While members and their staff are educated, they are, particular, they are typically generalists, unless it pertains to issues covered by the committees in which they serve. When the meeting starts, ask about the representative or staff person's background and tailor your remarks accordingly. Congressional staff are important, well-informed, and help provide direction to their boss's decision-making. Don't be disheartened if you meet with a member of the staff. A meeting or call with staff can be as valuable as a meeting with the representative or senator. 
be positive in your approach, avoid partisanship, and avoid being distracted by small talk or irrelevant issues. Prepare and practice a five to 10 minute presentation. Briefly introduce yourself. Say that you are meeting on behalf of the ABC or ANA and your organization. Describe ABC or ANA's mission, vision, and goals. Describe your organization using non-technical jargon and how it benefits society and in particular, your state or district. Provide an ask. For example, ask your legislators to support funding for the National Institutes of Health or ask them to join the Congressional Neuroscience Caucus. Support that ask with evidence. You've done the research. Frame your message and share your personal story. What do you want and why? Who will it help? Why is it important in the broader health policy, national political context? Why is it important to the residents of your state and district? You should expect to be interrupted with questions and you should welcome that dialogue. If you've got a question you don't know the answer to, Offer to follow up with the answer. An opportunity to reach out to the staff or legislator again is valuable and can help create an ongoing dialogue with the office. Congressional staff are very busy, so keep your conversation concise. Encourage questions and reactions to the issues. Follow up with a thank you email within one week of the meeting. You can find sample thank you letters on ABC's website. As we noted earlier, as of this recording, there are currently many fewer opportunities to meet in person on Capitol Hill. As we discuss meeting logistics, please keep in mind that a meeting may now be a phone call or a video conference call. If the meeting is on Capitol Hill, be aware that space is limited, especially in offices in the House of Representatives. You may end up holding a meeting in the reception area, the hallway, even in one of the cafeterias. Depending on the circumstances, you may even meet by phone or virtual meeting. Don't worry about the venue. Focus on your message. Dress professionally, but wear comfortable shoes if you are going to be walking around. House and Senate office buildings are very large and the floors are very hard. Bring your driver's license or state-issued identification. Bring business cards and your phone or a camera. You may get a photo op with a member of Congress. If you get lost, ask the Capitol Hill police officers. They are very helpful. Allow time for long lines at the entrance of buildings for security screening. If you are running late, call the congressional office and let them know. You will pass through metal detectors and go through security lines, so plan accordingly. Mute or turn off your cell phone during your meeting. Keep your focus on the content of the meeting. If you are an advocate from a disease group, you probably want to tell a story of how that disease has affected both someone, either someone you love or yourself. And be very clear on A, what, what that disease is, B, the kind of research that's being conducted, and C, how Congress can help in, in uh, facilitating that research. If you are a provider, you want to talk about, again, how difficult it is to treat this disease and what you've, what you've gone through, yet how on the horizon there are treatments that could be forthcoming, and the only way to address them is with more resources directed towards doing the appropriate research. Three, if you're a researcher, Talk about how the science that you're trying to do is ultimately going to help those people who are suffering from not just this disease, but related diseases and ultimately perhaps even unrelated diseases. There are a few things you can do to ensure you have a successful meeting and leave an impression on your legislators and their staff. And of course, there are a few things you want to avoid. Starting with the do's. Be appreciative. Thank them for taking the time to meet with you and for considering your viewpoint. Be forthright and informative. Keep your information brief, to the point, and understandable for the audience who may not be an expert in your issues. Stick to your planned agenda and provide the ask. Do you want your legislator to co-sponsor a specific piece of legislation or join the Congressional Neuroscience Caucus? Don't forget to ask them. Make a persuasive argument that is backed 
up by facts. Share statistics and data, but make sure your personal is the your personal story is the focus. The personal impact of your issue is what will stick in their memory and what may convince them to share your position. These issues are important and not just to you. Tell them, tell them how your issues impact the constituents broadly. Follow up. This meeting should be the start of a long-term relationship with your legislator's office. And on to the don'ts. Legislators and their staff have very busy schedules and a lot of constituents and stakeholder groups vying for their time. Don't expect them to drop everything for you. Stay on your agenda and don't lose track of time. You will get comments and questions about your issues. Don't be closed-minded. Respond genuinely to these and use them to further build out your case. In the same vein, don't be narrowly ideological or confrontational. If your legislator questions or disagrees with you, use your story and your facts to make your case. Don't react angrily or threateningly. Don't use overly technical jargon or medical language. Remember, legislators and staff are well-versed in a lot of things, but they may not be experts in the issues you present. Make sure your approach is conversational. You're not there to make a speech or recite talking points. Engage with the legislator and staff and give them the opportunity to share what they know and ask questions. Federal legislators set policies that affect society across the board. While certain policies may impact you personally, focus on the benefit to their constituents and the community. Don't appear to be self-serving. If you keep these tips in mind, there's no reason you won't have successful meetings with your representatives or senators. We started our organization in 2014 and the, the motivation behind uh, me starting the organization was my son Beckett. He was the sixth one in the world in 2012 to be diagnosed with a SYNGAP1 mutation. When I went as a mother looking and searching for, uh, for treatments and the challenges around uh, this particular disease that hardly anyone in the world, if anyone, knew anything about, <clears throat> I took it upon myself to get involved. The first thing usually I, I actually started with before I ever started the organization was getting involved with legislation and understanding that things change at the top and then they trickle down to the state. It has brought me to where I am today. I've been involved in many initiatives on Capitol Hill that bring funding in to both the FDA, the NIH, and many other agencies that help support initiatives for research around most any disease, cancer, brain disorders, uh, de degenerative dis neurological disorders, you name it, there, there is funding. But if you don't advocate for it, and you don't tell your congressmen or your legislators the needs in the community, then you're not gonna get what you need. You have to educate them. You are their educator. Your story is very important. So I wanna influence everyone out there uh, to go and meet your legislators. They work for you. Build a relationship with them because once that relationship is built, then you can help point them in the direction. And it doesn't matter party. Party, Democrat, Libertarian, Republican, it doesn't matter. You need to work with everyone because that is the only way to make a difference. They need to see your point of view and help create and structure laws. I build laws with uh, groups of people all the time, pieces of legislation that we try to get, pa you know, get passed in uh, and through Congress to the president to make sure that our communities with diseases, brain diseases, uh, rare diseases, you name it, has the attention it needs to push the needle forward to treatments. Thank you all for joining this broadcast. Whether you are new to this process or you have advocated before, I hope you've learned some useful tips for meeting with your representatives and senators. Please reach out if you have any questions and visit our advocacy toolkit located on the ABC's website. And please tune in to the third and final broadcast in this series to learn about effective advocacy in your home state or congressional district. Uh, you've got to trust the process. And I love the process so much, I went ahead and applied for law school. 
and I'm currently in Northwestern uh, Law School taking and working on my Master's of Science Law. And I'm doing all this for my own community and for my son's uh, best chances and his friends like him getting a treatment. 